guys, so I'm going to be talking about dipole-dipole intermolecular forces today. Um, intermolecular forces, of course, are forces between two atoms or two molecules or just two substances in general, um, and they are attracted to each other through different um, aspects, including the number of um, <coughs> electrons that they have, the electronegativity, or just um, depending on what bonds they have. But dipole-dipole forces uh, depend on the polarity of the molecule. Now what that means is that one side of your molecule is going to always be slightly more negative than the other side of the molecule. And this, um, of course, then that side of the molecule will be slightly more positive. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, we'll do nitrous oxide, um, NO. There is always going to be a difference in electronegativity when you have two different elements. Um, electronegativity is just the tendency of one element to draw all the electrons closer to them. Think of it as, you know, a little kid always wanting to hug their teddy bear and not letting you take it back away from them. Um, and so here, it happens that oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen, so it's going to be more negative because it attracts more of the electrons. And these two symbols just show that this side is more negative and this side is more positive. And it's almost like you have a magnet here, so a negative and a positive side, then obviously the negative is going to attract the positive side of another atom, or molecule in this case. Um, so NO, again, this is going to be positive, and this is going to be slightly negative. And the positive and negative charges here are going to join together. And then, like a magnet, those two NO molecules are going to be attracted to each other because of the difference in charges. Um, you want to make sure that if you describe dipole-dipole forces, that you make sure to show that um, the oxygen of one of your um, NO molecules is going to attract the nitrogen of another NO molecule. It's not that this oxygen attracts this nitrogen because you know we're talking about intermolecular forces and not intramolecular forces. Um, that's something that a lot of people get mixed up with, I think. So just make sure that um, that you say one of these attracts a, the end from another molecule. Um, in terms of the relative strength of dipole-dipole forces, um, because you have almost like a magnet here, um, they are stronger than the London, London dispersion forces, but because the difference in electronegativity or um, you know how much the electrons are drawn to the oxygen side in this case, or the more electronegative side, um, just in general, the dipole-dipole forces are not going to be as strong as hydrogen forces, um, which you can learn about um, if you click on my other video. But um, they are relatively strong. Um, and you're probably wondering if there are other examples of of um, molecules or compounds that experience dipole-dipole forces. And in general, you're going to find that all diatomic molecules, um, diatomic meaning two atoms, um, experience dipole-dipole forces because there's always going to be a difference in the electron placement um, within the molecule. So, you know, compounds like um, 
hydrofluoric acid, um, ICL, CO, and even water. I mean, these are all examples of, of molecules that experience dipole-dipole forces.